And I picked up this mask at Michael's. And it was, it's an expensive one actually, it's eight dollars and change. But the reason I picked it up was not to just decorate it and use this mask, but to use it as a mold type of thing so I can make future masks and use this as my whatever kind of style masks I want to make. So that's why the purpose is actually for me to buy the, uh, the reason why I purchased this mask. So we have a mask swap um, on International Crafters and uh, we like to have a couple of um, volunteers to do swaps here and there um, during the month. And um, one of the people, one of our group members chose to do a Halloween type of mask uh, for the swap. And um, if you guys are interested in checking out um, International Crafters, I'll leave a link below. You guys can check it out. Um, but yeah, so there's always new things to try. So anyways, I decided because the kids like masks and I like to do different things, maybe we can do some other projects with them. I thought I'd get this hard, quite hard, really good, sturdy um, mask. So the way I have done them in the past is I have used uh, like a toilet paper and filled in the inside of the mask. That works. Um, I'm going to try to do something a little different. I'm going to try to go on top here and make a mask here. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab some shop towels. And these are the blue shop towels. And I'm just going to wet them down with some water. This one particular one here is water and glycerin. And I have like different uh, just water bottles or whatever. But I'm going to wet it down with some water and my first layer of the mask will be this instead of me just actually putting it um, directly on with glue or anything like that so then I'm going to do a little bit of a paper and water piece like this to lay it down so then it comes right off when I'm ready for it to come off. So that's what I'm doing first of all. So it's kind of going to be like a paper mache, uh, paper towel type of thing. And um, But like I said, I want it to be able to slide off. So I'm just going to do my piece in just uh, wet first of all and then after I get the first layer or so on maybe a couple layers then I'm going to start adding a little bit of glue and then the glue if I do a couple layers should be fine and it won't go through that's my theory so I'm just going to rip up pieces and kind of um, decide on how I want this to go. Layering it over parts. And there's just a little bit of blister in here, but I don't have like, um, it's, I don't think it's necessary, but I thought it would slip off even, even more um, easier if I did it that way. So decide to use it like that instead of just the water. Now I'm just going to tear around the eyes, I think, a bit. So I'm going to do a couple layers like this, and then I'll be back. Okay, so this is where I'm at. I've got enough layers on there now that I should be able to slide the mask off without, and it's it's should be protecting it from sticking to the um, mask. It's our, It's my theory. So now I'm just going to add um, some glue. And this is pretty much what I paper mache with. Um, I like it. It works good for me. And um, yeah, I have no problems with the glue. So 
I just use the glue. It might be expensive, but I think it's worthwhile when you get the projects that you like. And they work good. So I'm just going to put glue all over. And then I'm going to start layering up my next paper towel layers. And then um, it shouldn't saturate through the towel very much because it is already saturated wet with water. So that's what my hopes is that it'll help protect the mask. Then I will try my best to clean up any residue on it afterwards. So then I can use it again for my next project, the mask. And um, the girls have things that they want, uh, masks that they want. So this is just the mask that I am making for my swap. So, and I usually don't record my swaps, but I thought it would be nice to um, to do it for once <laughs> and capture, because people usually ask, "Oh, how did you do that?" So it's nice that they can go on a video and check out what how somebody made their swap. So I think that's pretty cool. So now I'm just going to layer on some pieces of paper towel and glue onto my mask. And I'm just going to tear fairly small pieces. And I know it's going to be hard to see what you did and that kind of thing. You just can kind of try to pay attention and gauge where, what you, where you're at and that kind of thing. So it's just that easy is just kind of gauging it and this is a nice hard plastic so I think I'll be able to use the heat tool on on it the surface a little bit like on this part as well without melting it so it's um, not like the cheap dull store masks so I think it'll work if I'm careful not to go overboard see it's kind of easy to kind of figure out where you place it last now I do have quite a bit of glue coming out of the bottom, so I'm going to wipe that up. I don't want to damage my mask. Because I really want to use it again and again. I'm going to bridge my nose here. And this is just such a fun project because you can just really um, go wild on, on designing the mask. So I just still have no ideas of what. I had some ideas. I'm not sure if I'm going to incorporate it, um, how I'm going to incorporate the ideas that my I think that my partner will like. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be fun to start just totally from scratch, really. But you can, you know, also just grab a mask and start decorating it. But I wanted to try something new, a little different. The last mask I made um, was in the reverse of a porcelain mask. So I didn't have a mask and just didn't leave too much water in it. And it worked really well. And um, it was a really nice hanging piece, but it wasn't a wearable mask. This one, someone perhaps could wear it and um, and um, hang it up on the wall. And you can make it look with different techniques. You can make keep the get smooth it out or you can keep it like the cloth look and have that to your addition to your um, texture just added to your design so I'm going to continue doing a few more layers get your jammies on okay so I think I got quite a few layers on there I'm not sure if I need to make it thicker 
I'm going to work on um, adding a little bit of a horn. I'm hoping to get a horn. So what I'm going to do is probably almost make like a, this is going to be really sticky, really wet this up with some water and glue and try to shape this paper towel. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try my best to shape it into a horn shape and then kind of um, probably build on it. So, getting lots of glue on here. And want to just soak this up in glue. And it's not like a whole lot, but I want to kind of start making a foundation for a horn. I'm getting glue all over my piece. But I'm thinking I could build on it and then uh, have a, just a bit of a horn coming out. I don't know how long I want. I don't think it would be good to have something too long. I don't want to have to add anything for sturdiness. So, I mean, I could add, uh, even do like a foil or something, but I'm just going to try to see how much I can get away with here. Just a little one. And if it doesn't work, I can go ahead and make a foil piece. I might just do that. So sometimes you just kind of like, eh, I think I'm just going to grab a piece of foil. And I'm going to just put masking tape all over it so then the paper mache will adhere to it really well. And then I'll start, I'll do some layers of paper mache on top of this. So I'll, when I come back, this will be all covered in tape. The horn. The piece I was trying to make as a base to start um, <laughs> a horn there before that didn't quite, quite work out. I'm using that still to adhere it to the mask. I put quite a bit of layers in that spot because I knew I was going to put this there. So, or a horn. And now the tape is going to protect, um, it makes it so that it sticks to it really well, um, rather than just the aluminum foil. And then I'm just going to do some layers of this to get my mythical horn. Um, I asked my partner some of their favorite things, and one of them was um, unicorn. She had a unicorn collection. So I wanted to incorporate the unicorn horn onto my mask for that reason. I kind of like having it all soaked up like this, and this is a good paper towel. If it was a kitchen paper towel, regular paper towel, you would have it all over your fingers. But this shop blue shop towel um, from hard, uh, hardware stores or um, like stores with tools and whatnot um, is perfect for this type of project and handling. It works so well. So just gonna get all this around here and then do a couple of layers and I will be back. I am at the part here where I'm just kind of tearing off and adding more for stability, for strength, the base and onto the uh, horn. Um, you can even do like something like this with the make little antlers. Um, all you do is do the same thing with the foil and I think that would be really cute too. A cute little mask. So I'm just Putting the glue down at the base where I want to add just like the other layers before this and then um, yeah continuing it. Just wanted to do a couple more in front of you to show you how it's working and how 
it's coming together. I'm going behind here now. I'm using quite a bit of glue. But I want it to work. And I'm just taking my time to get around. And make a nice dirty piece. After, I'm also going to want to make a little bit of a twirl around it, I think, to make it more look like a unicorn, resemble what a unicorn horn would be. But right now, I'm concentrating on the trick. And that's how it's working. Just like that. Might look a little odd. Um, I don't know, but we'll see how it could turns out. Hopefully, it turns out really, really nice at the end of it all. It might be a little off-centered. I'm going to take this time while it's wet still to move it. Because I can do that. Kind of straighten out what I caused some wrinkles here. See, I have lots of play with it. I can really get away with a lot of moving around and that kind of thing right now. And then I think I will kind of go again more layers as I go here. But I really want to make this sturdy so it doesn't break in shipping and it'll look nice and be a strong piece on her wall. Just like that. Try to smooth out the top layers a bit more. Make a nice smooth piece. So I'll just continue this and I'll be back after a bit. So this is what I have so far from my uh, paper mache uh, mask. And now I'm going to heat it up a little bit with my heat tool to dry it off a little bit so I can handle it. And then I'm going to try to take it off of my face and see how that works. Let's hope that this works. I hope it worked. Peel it off. I put, remember I put water on it to begin with. It's coming off, but it's still pretty wet. But I don't want it to dry on there. So, I'm carefully take it off. Some glue obviously have gone through, but I did do quite a bit of layers of water. So, there we go. There's my mask. Now I just got, it's really, really wet, friends. Really wet. So I'm going to move this and then grab. I have a styrofoam head, so I'm going to grab that for now and just put it on there, just to get form to stay, just to sit on there for now. I can let it dry on there maybe, but I'm not sure how well it will stick, but it's not on there hard, so it might be fine. I'm just going to dry the inside of it a bit, and that might help too. I'm going to take, it is soaked. I can feel like muck in my fingers, it's soaked. But I put a lot of water on the inside. So now I'm going to try to dry it up a bit, it'll be movable, and then, then I can set it on the foam. So what I did is instead of just drying it, because it's going to be hard to hold it and dry it, I put paper towel over my foam face here. You can do it over, back over the mask if I wipe the mask clean. Dry actually. Maybe just water. And then throw the paper towel back on top.
Can you hold that? Thank you. Maybe. Put the paper towel on top and then just let it sit there like this, back on the mask. So then it keeps its form and it dries. So now I can let it dry overnight and then have, because drying it, um, you're going to have to let it sit and harden. Just like paper mache, you can't really dry it too fast. I did dry it enough on the top, in the front, so I can handle it. So then we will work on it again tomorrow. See what, how strong it is. If we need to add more layers and that kind of thing. It's back on my mask, but not it's not going to be permanently on there. Just like that. Now I'm gonna let it dry. Hello, friends. I am back with the next um, part of uh, my mask here. This is where I left off and let it dry. Put it in the oven even for a bit to, to uh, dry it out and that kind of thing. So this is what we got. And this is um, really I like how sturdy it is. And it, the process, whole process worked just perfectly, so that was nice. It was quite damp when I took it off, you guys seen that. But uh, put a couple of paper towels down on my mask and let it sit on top of that so there was a little bit of air movement, not just directly on the masks and taking longer to dry and I didn't want to get moldy or anything. So this is how it came up. I think I'm going to throw some gesso on it. And... Uh, then I will um, start thinking. I'm not quite sure of how I want to design it. I did pick up a few things. I picked up some different ribbons to have for the tie. Um, I picked up some glitter from Michaels and I also picked up chains and beads, a few beads just to thinking that I might add something like that on there. So first of all, I guess I'm just going to make sure it um, has a good coat so then I'm not putting so much layers of paint on it. So I'm just going to do a coat of gesso. And that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to do both the inside and the outside and I think that it's going to, well it's going to Get, give me a good foundation and it's not going to soak up into the paper towel or anything like that. So whatever, right? It's just going to give me something to start instead of just the blue. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it white or have a cream color off white, like a butter. Um, I wanted to, I was going thinking of putting feathers on it, but then I'm like unicorn feathers. Mm, trying to mimic the fur or give it some kind of hair because I want to be kind of like I don't know. Don't know because it's not got the horse face, and I, and I was thinking about doing that kind, but I did not want to do such a huge mask. So I thought that I could do kind of a partial mask. Maybe it'll be like a unicorn queen or something. I don't know. But anyways, this is kind of how it's coming out. I do want to uh, add like some jewels on there and uh, maybe even gold color would be a really nice color. That would be a good color. I did pick some really nice ribbon. So I got um, kind of the creamy wool, uh, wool type of stuff that's got some really nice texture and color in it. I also got, um, I'll show it to you. Although now I'm distracting from my job here. So I've got some ribbon. This one has gold. This one has a little bit of green in it, and I like that. And this one has like natural greens, cream, and that kind of thing. So I kind of think that's why I want to go with a few different ribbons on each side. And then have something to hang it up on the wall as well, like a, a 
wire. And I did pick up some nice word beatings, beats. So I'm going to use some of those. I might have to stain them a little bit because they're really white. And I want them to all kind of blend with the cream. So I might have to stain them a little bit just with some ink or something like that. This is the um, gesso mask. I'm going to gesso the inside with uh, black um, gesso. And just do that next. And then I'll be back with, um, I think I'm going to actually paint it gold. So just going to do the inside with my black gesso. And then, yeah, start painting it. And I think I'm going to go gold. Now I just got to choose what kind. Because there's just like more of an antique gold or like, I don't know. So I got to figure out which kind of metallic gold I would like to have. Okay, so I have the in inside outside gesso, black gesso on the inside, white gesso on the outside, and I think I'm going to paint it gold. So I have three different golds here. I have Emperor's Gold, which is a really nice bright gold. I have a glorious gold. It's almost more like a, oh, it's not so bright. And then I do have a champagne. So it's like, ah, which one? Maybe I'll try to see what the champagne will look like. I could always go over it and then mix it up. This is a from product from Deco Art, elegant finish metallic paint. And I'm going to um, paint this mask. Okay. So and I'm gonna, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this one. It's kind of got that little bit of an antique old, maybe a little bit of a look. So we'll try it. I think it's gonna look good. I put uh, it back on the mask to hold it, and uh, as well with paper towel underneath so I don't get my mask all full of paint. So there we go. It's gonna be fun. Um, so I know this is quite a little bit different than what we're expected for the masks, but I wanted to do something special for this swap because um, I happen to have the partner who is uh, leading this swap. So that is why I'm kind of went a little bit more elegant with the mask today. I'm really liking this champagne gold on here. I was not sure, like, I was wandering around thinking should I put feathers on it. It's just like such, um, so many options. So, I still have lots of, um, I do have glitter and all that kind of stuff. I might add to it. I think I could um, also um, glue rhinestones on there and all that kind of stuff. So it's just so much, so many options, things to do. There we go. Get the back. It helps me kind of hold it better too because when I was doing the gesso I should have used this to do the front. It would have been easier to paint it all. I think I'm going to do two coats but I'm really liking it. There we go. I'm going to do two coats on this. This is what I have. I absolutely love it. So it's turned out really beautiful. I think I'm going to put glitter all over, though. 
I was like, mm, this is just perfect. I could just leave it like this, but I want to really go all out. I'm going to glitter up the thing. So I'm going to put some paper down so it catch the glitter, I think. <laughs> and then um, do some Mod Podge or decoupage finish um, glue sealer. I'm going to use that all over it. So I'm going to put that on everywhere. And then we're going to get the glitter going everywhere. Then I'm going to do a finish spray on it after to, to seal the glitter down so it doesn't get everywhere. Um, after it's been on the the mask for it to not to fall off. I think just going a little overboard with it will be really a nice touch because this is like such a decorative piece that I think that I will, won't be overboard. It'll be just what it needs. So I'm glittering it up. As well as this wonderful gold. So, oh, am I even in the picture? Well, it's such a project to get glue all over. Okay. Now we're going to try to get it all, all on here. Glitter it up. It's very glammy, but glamour, glamorous. I really just want it to be just so perfect. So, why not? I'm going to get the underneath here. This is a lot of glitter. There we go. It's a lot, but a lot of it's going to come off. So I think I'm going to take a soft brush maybe and just kind of push some of the, I'm going to take a soft brush and just gonna push some of the glitter on. I think I got it everywhere, but I might go over a few spots here. So I'm just going to use the brush as a, just per, getting it in there. Getting it into my glue. Just patting it everywhere. And whatever doesn't come stick comes off after it's dry. And then we'll see what's left behind. I'm going to have to wash this brush probably after because I may have some glue on it. It's sure looking really shiny right now and really different but the once the glue dries it's going to be clear and it's not going to be like this much glitter on it it's going to a lot of it will come off I'm not sure about heat drying it right now because I don't want to melt my glitter. So I'm just going to leave it dry naturally. There's a lot of glitter on here. There we go. Okay, so I have the mask to the side. It's got a lot of drying to do. Um, the glue is still white on it, so I kind of want it to 
it's going to have to sit for a while to get that white go clear from the glue. And if it doesn't, then I will repaint the gold and maybe put less uh, glitter on it. But for now, I'm going to let it dry. So now I want to look at some of these and decide what I am going to do with the... I also bought chain, and I want to put some chain on there. So I don't know if there's divine will. And I do want to... Um, stain these. There's Believe. That's a nice one. Beauty. Gentle, sweet. There's Heart. So I gotta pick out some of these and then stain them. So I'm gonna look through this so and pick some I up. I chose a few, and I gotta get my camera or my light. Oh, that's the way. I chose Beauty, but in the reverse, I noticed it has Secret Song from Believe and Always. And because it had From, I also put Friend, and Friend in the back has Gentle. So I think that's pretty neat. Those ones right there. And what I'm going to do is I got some homemade, um, these ones are marker, so alcohol spray marker, and we'll see if we can get these stained, and I will um, carefully dry them up, and then I'll try to seal them with uh, probably spray, just so then they, they stay uh, like this. They stay, they stay stained. You can't see it too much in the video here. Don't know why. Maybe it's the, the light's just too bright, but they are stained there, so that looks good. I have this little mat, and it's heat resistant, and I'm going to dry that up. And it's heat resistant, so it's for like the glue gun and stuff like that. So I'm just using it to do this on, keep it a little dry on my paper. And now done with staining these. Right now it's looking quite white, like white on there. The glue is still got to dry and I may, if I don't, if it looks too white, I may cover it up again with the gold. And here is my stained. And I sealed them with uh, acrylic um, sealer. The matte, um, I'm trying to think where I'm looking, but of course it's the other way, Americana sealer in a can. And yeah, so then it's coated, so then these won't get um, wiped away. Now I've got my hole maker. I'm going to make a little hole right here on the side. And I'm going to try to make it e evenly through to the other side. So the hole comes right here. I want the other one right here. And it's such an easy way to make the hole with this because it's just paper towel, so it's not very too hard. It's not like hard plastic or anything like that. And then I'm going to put some little rivets in it. Or, um, Put the, put the little things in there anyway. You can't think of what all that kind of stuff, and it didn't warp or anything, so it's really nice. This is the really strong, nice mask from Michaels that I picked up. So it's perfect for what I wanted. Now, I'm going to find some dull looking ones here and try to get those in there. I don't want, I don't know if I want, I don't want the, the bright, bright gold decided that. And I do have chain, so it'll kind of match the chain. And I think I'm going to add some chain to it. So, it's going to have this nice little finished look to it. And I think it's going to look really nice. And I might have made the hole too big. 
It looks like a feet with a long one. I can glue them in if it's if they pop out. Ah, drop that on the floor. Grab another one, pick that up later. There we go. Isn't that pretty? It makes it look just a little bit better. More professional. Now I want to create a hanger in the back. And um, I'm going to do that by putting the wire through and uh, twisting it here on the outside. And then I'll have um, my ribbons and whatnot there to disguise that twisting up. And I have some string, rope, a string, wool, yarn, or whatever. And then, yeah. I just want to make some twisting like this so it won't go through. Just to show you. It'll stop it from going through. Now this one is just to hang it up, and I'll do the same on this side. Now I just put down my tool, what did I do with it? Underneath, let me ask. go to the end. I want the circles really big. Now my partner will be able to hang it up on the string or on this wire. It's not going to be worn um, unless she wants to take the wire out. It's meant to be hung up. So a decorative piece. Now I have to decide on how many pieces I want to have on the side. And I have probably, I have a few and I think I want to use them all. So let's see what we could do with these. Put some plastic on here. So I have a few. I love this. This is a really pretty uh, ribbon. My scissors may not cut it. Might have to grab my other ones. So I'm just going to measure it all out to be about the same, and then put them on each edge. It kind of like a bit of the mane of the unicorn thing, even though it's not a true unicorn. I'm kind of mimicking that main thing. So now I think I'm going to put it through the wire and if I can fit it all in there. And if not, I might have to make my little holes bigger. And then that will be that. I love all this stuff on here. Got the camera a little closer because I got to put it through this little hole here in that uh, wire. So I'm grabbing my pieces that I'm putting through and hopefully that'll work. So I have one green, a bronze, and a kind of gold, and then the wool or whatever that is. And this one's for the other side. So my, I'm going to fold it in half, try to get this through. Here. And if it doesn't go through, we will have to make the hole bigger. Because there's a lot of stuff going through this hole here.
and feed it through. And I've got one more piece to pull through here. You can see I am pinching it between these little grabber scissor thingies. <laughs> now I've got all the string pull it through and I that thing is that I love that it clamps so then I'm not having to hold the uh, scissors shut and using my own strength and there we go they're all through a little bit of a struggle but not too much I think the most difficult part is that it's kind of the end is catching on my ribbon. So now I'm just going to go this way, get through all my pieces. I think I'm got. I think I'm through them all, and I'm just. Pulling them up a bit more. Yeah, I think it's just pulling on the uh, the one little piece of wire that is catching on the ribbon. The very end. So once I get this loop big enough, I'm going to put them through, and then I will. Pull it back unless I can't do it and then I might just leave it but that's how it's so far is looking I just got to loop it through so since this one didn't want to come out through this one worked really well but I decided to keep that just like this what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my circles that I twisted I'm going to flatten them a little bit to pinch my ribbon in there so it won't get yanked out and now you can, it's going to be old, like an oval shape and it will not go through that hole anyhow. And, oh, I'm hitting my unicorn horn. I'm hitting it. It'll give another nice design aspect to it. And that is the sides of the mask. This white on here is so far not making me happy, but it might, um, once the glue does dry, all the way still it may clear up so we'll see about that now I was thinking about putting some chain and I do have to add my beads so I'm going to put um, two on each side and I'm probably going to put them on the, the wool piece I think I can get that through maybe not no, I'm going to get and put it through another piece because that's going to be not fun to put through on that wool. So bulky in spots. It's very beautiful. So there's that. And I think that's cute. And I believe in always. Now I just want to make sure that this is the way I want my words to be because. Uh, And I'm going to do these two. I probably should have put this one first, but it doesn't matter. Actually, I'll just tie this one off on here and do another ribbon. There we go. And I could do more beads, but I think I'm just going to do like V4. There we go, putting that one through. This is fun watching me. And then I'm going to tie that one up. And I'm not really going to, I'm just going to try to see wherever it lands. I guess that's where it's going to go. And that's it.
So I'm going to finish that up and then I'm going to figure out the now chain. I'm going to add the chain. I'm going to do it the same way as I did the ribbon half and half. I'm going to jump, add the jump ring to it right there. Bought a pack of jump rings. That The reason I bought some instead of made some is because I don't have this kind of wire to make my own so it's matching. I don't want to have silver, really shiny silver showing through. So now I'm just going to try to figure out the length that I want. And then I'm going to cut them both equally. And then add it to this piece here right here. So I'm going to measure, cut the same length of chain. I did purchase this for this mask too. And um, a lot of times I like to recycle chains, but this time I just wanted to buy, I don't usually buy things like this, but I wanted to buy that so I'd have it on hand for things like this. I love making charms and that kind of thing. So I'm just kind of figuring out where the top is, throw my jump ring on, and then we have the project done. So let's see how tough this is. Not too bad. Well, actually, I can't do it with my fingers, so I guess it is tough, but it's going to twist. Not uh, pull apart, but twist. I can just twist it back. And I think that this will also, I don't know if you guys can see me, I'm kind of paying attention to the, to the jump ring here. Onto this, it'll also help disguise the metal up here, but it's just a very, not very shiny, so there we go. I think it adds a little touch, nice little touch. And I think we're done with the mask. I'm going to probably finish the back a little bit better, and I think that's about it. And twist this, add this jump ring. Well, friends, the project is done. This is how it looks. Let's see if we can um, um, I don't know if I can get this to go the right way. Okay. All the stuff in the background you can see, but I'm turning my camera off so you can see it what it would look like kind of up. I'll hold it by the Unicorn horn. And this is the done project. So, all that light back there is not helping. So, I hope you guys like this project. Don't forget to craft like a duck. I will show some pictures at the end here. And yeah. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.